Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. It's 12.21, I just, um, the radio just went on and it went, it's 2020. But then before that there was this beep, 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 beep. Anyway, it's time to record, it's 12.21. 15 seconds in, I've got some cards, I've got a cup of coffee. The lighting's not great, but we will work with it. Okay. What's this energy about? Now the energy I'm feeling this morning is I can put two songs to it as well. Uh, I think they're both by Lambrinth. Lambrinth. Okay. Uh, jealous and Say Something, I'm Giving Up On You. I can't remember who he's singing that with. Um, I, I think that's him anyway. But they're the two songs that uh, come through. That kind of energy. We've got this. This is like a stubborn energy on the table. Okay. So um, we've been kind of touching on this subject of the Divine Masculine feelings small in comparison to the Divine Feminine. Uh, maybe jealous, envious. Okay. Should we do a Celtic cross? Let's do a Celtic cross. clock over there might be a minute or two behind but it says um, 12.21 okay let's have a look at this now number 12 is the uh, hangman and number 21 is the world card and what we're talking about is the legacy this opportunity that's before us okay oh wow um I don't think I've ever had this come out on a spread before. So this is what we're talking about, the legacy, the offering of abundance, prosperity, a very rich life. What's the block? The acceptance of the love. Okay. So kind of wanting it all, but um, the challenge is actually accepting this deep, um, eternal, unconditional love. That's the block. I don't think I've ever had the Ace of Cups blocking uh, the Ace of Pentacles. It's for both counterparts, the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. What's interesting is the offering is actually a real hand. And then the block, it looks like... Um, it's more ghostly, more spiritual. So they come as a pair. They come hand in hand. Okay. But one you can see on the outside, like the pentacles, your abundance. Uh, this is about your physical, your physical wealth, your physical world. And then the challenge is actually, they come hand in hand. So the challenge is allowing yourself to be um, internally loved. So yes, of course, we'd all take the abundance, the happy life, but this is the divine wanting us to feel contented within as well. As within, so without. They come together. You, you won't receive one without the other. Okay, let's have a look at the past energy here. Because there's a stubborn energy. We saw the um, four of cups and the masculine was looking at the three cups in the physical but refusing to have a look at this deep spiritual love. I, all I want to say is what a shame. That's just such a waste. Okay, And I feel like it's to do with the insecurity within. The emotions are deep. The divine masculine is just mm, bitter. Okay. Should we have a look at the past energy? The devil. The lovers are in this card, and this is the card of being intoxicated. 
okay, um, to the degree where it's just too hot. It's like it's too hot in the kitchen. Okay, too hot to handle. But it's like, but I feel the masculine energy wants to handle the money. He doesn't want to ha handle the love side of this. And it's shame that's behind it. He's hiding behind the shame. Okay. Should we have a look at his current energy? We can take this card. Going through the rebirth. Okay. So there is an understanding here. I feel as if this is the masculine in training. You kind of have the uh, priest preaching here. The king's knocked down, which the king would just be worried about his wealth. There's a feminine here, she's turning her face away from it. And then we have a little one here who's kind of like begging for you to go through with it. There's a boat in the background. So your ship's come in. The card of transformation. Your ship's come in. Your crown's been knocked off of your head. Your pride. I feel like your inner child. I feel like this is your inner child. It's like begging you, please, just take the opportunity to be loved. And then the feminine aspect here. Because this is neither masculine nor feminine. This is just like a skeleton. And then the feminine here is, the feminine aspect, I want to say, is kind of saying, I just don't want to look at it. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. And then we have spirits here. And I feel because um, the sneeze is kind of sitting in me. <laughs> spirits. Uh, that's what's happened. So it's really this uh, priest is kind of asking, will you let us in? So the masculine energy here is absolutely craving for the love, but it's actually their feminine side that's, that's scared. Okay. So they're in their feelings, and they don't want to be in their feelings. They just kind of want to get on and feel manly. Okay, but we're half feminine, half masculine. Like, this is something that needs to be dealt with because you're always going to be carrying your feminine side along with you. And seeing as the devil here, he's kind of igniting the masculine here and pointing, really, well, highlighting, raising his hand over here. You need to deal with the feminine side. It's quite a deep, dark place to be in. Should we have a look into the future? <clears throat> well, the future looks bright if you want it to be. And then there's the energy of, well, of course you want it to be, but there's still this reluctance to actually um, integrate. This is an energy that just grates on you. It's like it gets under your skin. The feminine gets under your skin. and kind of gives you a prickle rash. <laughs> Scratched your skin off. <clears throat> In the future, um, like I said, it's not really something that you're going to be able to escape from. So in the future, it's just lots of things happening. They do feel spiritual feel. They do feel spiritual feelings, feels. So I feel like there's going to be lots coming your way. Okay. It's like your inner child has begged you to be loved. Your feminine has kind of said, we're not going there. This is within, internal. Okay, your higher self <clears throat> is saying, please let us in. And there's a kind of a... Well, there's a bitter taste. <clears throat> you could be drinking. You could be drinking bitter. Okay. Um... 
but you've got a bombardment of messages coming in. They're going to come straight at you. They're not going to stop, really. So you're going to be pestered, basically, by the divine, spiritually. <clears throat> if you don't allow them in. Okay. It's like, say something, I'm giving up on you. I mean, the divine is offering this to the masculine at some point. If you really don't want it, then, you know, but it feels like they're not giving up on you just yet. <laughs> they want to be sure that you're sure. Okay. Because it's all available for you and it's all a divine offering. What's assisting behind the scenes? The Hierophant talking to the masculines as a collective. The keys um, indicate the blending of feminine, the crossing over of feminine masculine energy at the bottom here. And then you have two masculines here. Okay. Um, it, their crown is exposed to receive these messages. And that's what's due to come in in the future. So this masculine, it feels like he is going to learn, but he knows he's going to learn the hard way. Okay. Assisting you behind the scene is the Hierophant. <clears throat> How are you feeling about this situation? Well, you know what you need to do. This is quite a sad, sorry energy. Um, you've got the lion scowling at you. So there's an angel here. Um, the energy of Leo is coming through because that's a balancing of the masculine and feminine energy, but this is about having compassion for yourself and for others. The masculine here doesn't look too proud of himself. It's like the feminine here has to come. So will you accept it? You've got to blend these. This, I'm not really talking about an outside divine feminine. I'm talking about the divine feminine within, embracing this. Okay, so the healing wand is here. So this is wanting to be healed within. Uh, this imbalance of feminine masculine energy. This uh, is the card of spiritual union. It ha has to occur first before you can have physical union. So before you go anywhere, before you're going to get to go anywhere, you need to uh, balance your feminine masculine. It's more your feminine energy with your masculine. Um, before you're allowed through the gateway there towards um, <clears throat> the sunshine. The towers, two towers here is uh, suggesting that if you go too early then you won't be able to get out. You will find that you'll keep being blocked. Okay. So I feel like we're looking for the sun without the towers around it. Then you kind of know that you're good to go. Okay. Otherwise you're just going to keep coming across towers. Across obstacles, hurdles. More tests. Okay, so how you're feeling about this? Well, you're going to have to look at it at some point. How does this affect others? King of Wands. You're just blank. There's nothing coming through, <clears throat> apart from when I said, how does this affect others? It was like it doesn't affect others. It's going to affect uh, this masculine. So I feel the energy of needing to change. Look at all the uh, the lion, the two lions behind him on his back. Okay. And I'm feeling the energy of well, the yin-yang symbols which is this energy here <clears throat> of masculine feminine joined and the story goes that this is what we were like when we were first created 
okay masculine feminine together four arms four legs um, I'm not really sure about the face thing whether there was two faces but anyway Zeus discovered that they were extremely powerful together so he split them in half and threw them like in I don't know whether it was opposite directions but if you found your way back together then you was allowed to be you're allowed to uh, keep your power your power was more powerful than the gods so this is about doing it for you and that's why they're really asking you to tap into your god source energy go and source god consciousness that lies within you hopes or fears Again, this is the card of partial success. Uh, masculine, feminine energy. You're stable yourself. I'd say your masculine energy. Over here, it looks like you might need to adopt some romance. There's some roses here. Okay. You've got your hands on the wand. And then you've got the world. So it's time for you to have a really, really good think about this. What on earth are you doing? Well, what are you doing here on earth? What was your purpose? What is your purpose? Let's look at your outcome. One, two, three, four, tell me that you love me more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Divine Feminine's energy, the Empress. Okay. You're not going to be able to embrace a true Divine Feminine, the true Empress, if you are unable to embrace that and love that aspect of yourself. Okay. That's it. The Empress. Would you like a story from Chicken Soup for the Soul? I keep being drawn to this page. See here. So. It's kind of like sticking out a bit. On learning and teaching. Interesting. Look, the, <laughs> the page is actually... I'd like to take this page out. I don't really like the title of it. Should I read it? We're the retards. It's not very pleasant, is it? But hey. On learning and teaching, we're the retards. On my first day of teaching, all my classes were going well. Being a teacher was going to be a cinch, I decided. Then came period seven, the last class of the day. As I walked toward the room, I heard furniture crash. Rounding the corner, I saw one boy pinning another to the floor. Listen, you retard, yelled the one on the bottom. I don't give a damn about your sister. You keep your hands off her, you hear me, the boy on top threatened. I drew up my short frame and asked them to stop fighting. Suddenly, 14 pairs of eyes were riveted on my face. I knew I did not look convincing. Glaring at each other and me, the two boys slowly took their seats. At that moment, the teacher from across the hall stuck his head in the door and shouted at my students to sit down, shut up and do what I said. I was left feeling powerless. I tried to teach the lesson I had prepared, but was met with a sea of guarded faces. As the class was leaving, I detained the boy who had instigated the fight. I'll call him Mark. Lady, don't waste your time, he told me. We're the retards. Then Mark strolled out of the room. Dumbstruck, I slumped into my chair and wondered if I should have become a teacher. Was the only cure for problems like this to get out? Okay. Was the only cure for problems like this to get out? I told myself I'd suffer for one year and after my marriage, that next summer, I'll do something more rewarding. <clears throat> What's the only cure for problems like this to get out? I told myself I'd suffer for one year and after my marriage, that next summer, I'll do something more rewarding. They got to you, didn't they? It was my colleague who were coming to my classroom earlier. I nodded. Don't worry, he said. I taught many of them in summer school. 
There are only 14 of them, and most won't graduate anyway. Don't waste your time with those kids. What do you mean? They live in shacks in the fields. They're migratory labour, pickers, kids. They come to school only when they feel like it. The boy on the floor had pestered Mark's sister while they were picking beans together. I had to tell them to shut up at lunch today. Just keep them busy and quiet. If they cause any trouble, send them to me. As I gathered my things to go home, I couldn't forget the look on Mark's face as he'd said, We're the retards. Retards? That word clattered in my brain. I knew I had to do something drastic. The next afternoon, I asked my col colleague not to come into my class again. I needed to handle the kids in my own way. I returned to my room and made eye contact with each student. Then I went to the board and wrote E C I N A J. That's my first name, I said. Can you tell me what it is? They told me my name was Weird and that they had never seen it before. I went to the board again and this time wrote J A N I C E. Several of them blurted the word, then gave me a funny look. You're right, my name is Janice, I said. I'm learning, impaired, something called dyslexia. Or I'm learning impaired, something called dyslexia. When I began school, I couldn't write my, name, my own name correctly. I couldn't spell words, and numbers swam in my head. I was labelled retarded. That's right, I was a retard. I can still hear those awful voices and feel the shame. So how'd you become a teacher? Someone asked. Because I hate labels, and I'm not stupid, and I love to learn. That's what this class is going to be about. If you like the label retard, then you don't belong here. Change classes. There are no retarded people in this room. I'm not going to be easy on you, I continued. We're going to work and work until you catch up. You will graduate, and I hope some of you will go on to college. That's not a joke, it's a promise. I don't ever want to hear the word retard in this room again. Do you understand? They seem to sit up a little straighter. We did work hard, and I soon caught glimpses of promise. Mark especially was very bright. I heard him tell a boy in the hall, This book's real good. We don't read baby books in there. He was holding a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. Months flew by and the improvement was wonderful. Then one day Mark said, But people still think we're stupid because we don't talk right. It was the moment I had been waiting for. Now we could begin an intensive study of grammar because they wanted it. I was sorry to see the month of June approach. They wanted to learn so much. All my students knew I was getting married and moving out of state. The students in my last period class were visibly agitated whenever I mentioned it. I was glad they had become fond of me, but what was wrong? Were they angry? I was leaving the school. Or were they angry I was leaving the school? On my final day of classes, the principal greeted me as I entered the building. Will you come with me, please? He said sternly. Well, that didn't sound really sternly, but hey. Will you come with me, please? He said sternly. There's a problem with your room. He looked straight ahead as he led me down the hall. What now? I wondered. It was amazing. There were sprays of flowers in each corner, bouquets on the students' desks and filing cabinets, and a huge blanket of flowers lying on my desk. How could they have done this? I wondered. Most of them were so poor that they relied on the school assistance programme for warm clothing and decent meals. I started to cry and they joined me. Later I learned how they had pulled it off. Mark, who had worked in a local flower shop on the weekends, had seen orders from several had seen orders from several of my other classes. He mentioned them to his classmates. Too proud to ever again wear an insulting label like poor. Mark had asked the florist for all the tired flowers in the shop. Then he called funeral parlours and explained that his class needed flowers for a teacher who was leaving. They agreed to give him bouquets saved 
after each funeral. That was not the only tribute they paid me, though. Two years later, all 14 students graduated and six earned college scholarships. 28 years later, I'm teaching in an academically strong school, not too far from where I began my career. I learned that Mark married his college sweetheart and is a successful businessman. And coincidentally, three years ago, Mark's son was in my sophomore honours English class. Sometimes I laugh when I recall the end of my first day as a teacher to think I consider quitting to do something rewarding. How beautiful. How beautiful. Okay. No retards here. Let's see what your angels and ancestors would like to say. Seeing as they're all over this. Spirit Fox, trust in your talents in changing times. The message is, stay alert as change is in the air. The Spirit Fox features my favourite animal of all time, the Red Fox, an amazing resilient creature able to survive in urban environments or the freezing temperatures of the Arctic. Foxes know what it's like to be hunted. For centuries they have been sought for their precious fur when all they want to do is to survive. So the spirit fox can help you overcome the energies of adversity and unfair treatment. Also, as urban foxes hide in cities and go about their business in the darker hours, the fox offers the, med the medicine of blending in. The extended message. The energies around you are changing at this time. I feel like this is what's going on here. Stay alert as changes in the air. The energies around you are changing at this time and although it may not always be comfortable, you are equipped with all that you need to survive this shift. You are being presented with opportunities to reach spaces you've never encountered before, and this can make you feel on edge. But be open to the shifts occurring, because they really are the answers to your prayers. The experience of being hunted or threatened is now behind you, and you are being invited to come out of your den and reveal your glory and talents. Call upon Spirit Fox Medicine to help you be seen for who you are, and trust in your talents in order to be the best you can be in these changing times. I just want to go to Lumi. the card. We have one. This came out the other day. We shall reread it. Card number six. We shall reinforce the message because it seems it hasn't changed. You're not a retard. But that's kind of not really bothering me. But, uh, the Divine Masculines here would consider themselves to be retarded.
Okay, I have abolished duality from myself. I have seen the two worlds as one. One I seek, one I know, one I see and one I call. That's a good sign. Okay, because we've had a look at the yin yang on his throne here and I explained about the feminine masculine energy. This is partial success. You need the blending of both. We have the Empress is, is sitting comfortably in her own energy, okay, um, as the outcome. Two of Cups, feminine and masculine energy here being blended, being accepted, becoming one. And then we have the blending of the keys here. It's just suggested everywhere. Masculine, feminine energy begging you, allow yourself to be loved, one, and then we have the ice and the ice and the ice, I have abolished duality from myself, I have seen the two worlds as one, one I seek, one I know, one I see and one I call, Rumi, you look for me and what do you see, you, am I playing games with you? Holding up a mirror for you to behold God. Yes. These are the games of love and truth. Look for me and find yourself. For I am you and you are me. And together we are one. Playing hide and seek in love's great playground. <clears throat> Got this colour here. Like molten gold poured from the furnace of divine love into a one of a kind mould. You are created uniquely and of divine essence. You are both the lover and the beloved. There is no aspect, <clears throat> there is no aspect of your life separate from your spiritual journey, and there is no aspect of you that is not of divine origin. So then why the frowning? The fear or the questioning? Let me share a subline secret with you. And let me whisper it into your heart now. There is nothing to fear. All is unfolding according to the divine genius. And there is a sweet shift in store for you. No matter how dire circumstances may appear to be, or despairing you may feel, there is still an avenue through which fulfilment and resolution will be granted. This will happen. This is because the divine seeks wholeness of the one. That means anything and every part of existence, and that includes you and all aspects of your being and life, is claimed by the divine. Your return to the divine is demanded. Every part of you, every life circumstance. The divine keeps... <clears throat> the divine keeps rigorous, flawless accounts. Therefore, nothing shall be left unaccounted for, not even that which seems to be outside divine attention and grace at this moment. You must remember that you are a living heart, the dweller at the centre between heaven and earth, star and soil, light and dark. If you cannot summon the joy to, ri to rise up and meet the divine beloved, fear not, Okay, so if you cannot summon the joy to rise up and meet the Divine Beloved, fear not. That cunning lover lies deep within the depths, waiting to gather you into sacred embrace as you descend into darkness. Either through flying or falling, you shall be caught and tangled up in Divine Embrace. So fear not, cast aside worry and concern, Know that you are thoroughly itemised on the divine ledger and not one moment of your struggle or suffering shall miss the hawk-like gaze of the ever-attentive and heavenly beloved. <clears throat> this oracle comes to you with particular guidance. There is a friction or conflict within you and your life right now, a sense perhaps of being pulled in more than one direction, 
and confusion because of this. You are questioning which path to take, this way or that. What if you choose this path and it turns out that the other would have been better? But how can you know now what choice, if any, is needed in your life? So many questions your mind is scurrying. There is no other word for it. Backwards and forwards it goes, to and fro, trying to settle upon the truth. I love you too much to allow this to continue unchecked. Surrender it, give it up. The truth you seek is this, you shall be. You shall manifest your destiny just as the acorn grows into the oak tree. You cannot be other than what you are, and as you accept this, life responds. It breathes and relaxes around you, so what you need can come to you more easily. It finds you, drawn to the need in you that is natural and inviting, and not a cause for anxiety or distress. The need leads to satiety. What is desired and what fulfills that desire is one. They are lovers that come to each other naturally, even through darkness and confusion, drawn to each other, following the natural course of the universe, to become one. So do not fret and fear, my beloved. Do not hold back from that which feels incomplete, out of anxiety or distress. It is just the lover that will soon be joined by the beloved. You are recognising the moment before this occurs. So fret not, and instead let the inner lover loose. Allow her to shake her hair out. <laughs> Allow her to shake out her hair. Put on her most sensuous perfume and laugh as she dances barefoot in fields of lush green and fragrant flowers. Let her tempt her beloved to come close because she can be seen, she can be heard, her movement sends her scent through the air. She entices the yearning beloved to her and soon enough they meet and it becomes possible for yet again two to become one and then there will be wild peace and aesthetic contentment within you. If there is any part of you struggling to surrender the conflict between old and new, between what has been and what needs to be, between passion and duty, creativity and rationality, between this role or identity, then know this, even the conflict serves. Don't choose either one and believe it to be the answer. Sometimes the sacrifice is not one or the other, but the idea that it can be only one or the other. At another level, a level of divine resolution, there is beyond the apparent polarity and conflict, a third way. The rising up to where there is only one perfection taking place constantly. Open your heart, you'll find the bridge to understanding and trusting in that perfection now, where it has always been and will always be. Don't worry, all is happening exactly as it should. This oracle brings you particular guidance. There is a resolution and a perfect coming together of elements in your life that might have seemed desperate or in conflict. Something you have been trying to integrate is so very nearly ready to click into place. Perform the sacred honouring ritual and stay with your process. The coherence, the, inter the integration, the balance and coming together you seek is on your horizon, approaching you swiftly now. Very swift. The sacred honour and ritual. Place your hands at your heart and say aloud, Rumi who loves me unconditionally, I gaze into my heart and you are there. I gaze into your heart and see my own face. We are one. This oneness is contagious. May it swiftly affect every aspect of my inner world, so that my outer existence aligns gently and with perfect harmony with the great divine beloved. You and I, are one. You and I are on what? You and I are one with the perfection of divinity unfolding now and always through grace and my own free will. 
so be it. When you are ready, place your hands in prayer position and bow your head in reverence and recognition to the one divine plan unfolding. Say, I surrender into the one truth of divine perfection, which includes my own divine destiny now. Through mercy and grace, so be it. And when you are ready, simply close your eyes and bow your head again. Then you have completed your ritual. Yeah, what's the reading? It's beautiful. Okay, guys, have yourself a fantastic day and I will catch up with you soon. Until then, take care. Much love. Bye for now.